At least two Republican congressmen are running to be the next Speaker of the House. Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan and Georgia Congressman Austin Scott are lobbying members in a closed door meeting right now competing for the Speaker's gavel. And Scott has been very critical of his Republican colleagues who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy and reject their last candidate, Steve Scalise, who dropped out of the race last night. We have CNN Chief Congressional Correspondent Manu Raju, who is on Capitol Hill following every twist and turn and yet somehow kind of ending up right back at the same place. Uh, Manu, I know that you spoke to Congressman uh, Scott before the meeting. What did he tell you? Yeah, he has been sharply critical of everything that's transpired over the last week, and he has a lot of people who align himself with that view. Last week, he called those members, those eight Republicans who sided with Democrats, called them chaos agents. And then yesterday, leaving this closed-door meeting after Steve Scalise, who was the House Majority Leader, was the Speaker nominee for this party to replace Kevin McCarthy after the historic vote pushing him aside, when Scalise stepped aside amid opposition from a number of members, when I talked to Austin Scott about that, he did not hold back. We've got a very small group of people that they have to have everything their way. And, you know, we had a group that sabotaged uh, Speaker McCarthy, and now we've had a group that sabotaged, you know, Steve Scalise, both of them great people. How does that make you guys look? It makes us look like a bunch of idiots. So yesterday in that closed door meeting, Scott, in fact, said he was opposed to Jim Jordan's candidacy and he was not expected to run. And his uh, so his decision to do so today was a bit of a surprise here. The question was, how many votes will he peel away from Jim Jordan? And if Jim Jordan still wins the Republican nomination, which is a simple majority threshold of the 221 members. But if he peels away enough support, decides not to get out of this race, how will what will happen then? And what will Jim Jordan ultimately decide to step aside because Jordan has insisted that he must have 217 votes of the 221 Republican conference to go to the floor. If he does not have that today, this afternoon, will he step aside? And then what will happen then? Will there be another speaker candidate? All so many questions still, guys, after more than a week of this disarray, dysfunction, and inability to do anything here in the House because of this leadership crisis on the Republican side. At the moment, they're trying to resolve it, but still major questions about what whether they can be resolved at this sometime today, guys. Deja vu all over again. Manu Raju on Capitol Hill. Please stand by, Manu. Also joining us is CNN Chief National Affairs Correspondent Jeff Zeleny. Jeff, if they can't agree on a speaker, if they can't have consensus on a speaker, how are they going to fund the government? How are they going to keep the government open? How are they going to agree on aid to Ukraine? All these legislative priorities that are hanging in the balance. And aid for Israel. I mean, look, all of those are good questions for which there are few answers. Because what this is showing is, Manu was saying, I mean, the House isn't able to govern, but it's more than that. One of our major political parties is in a state of paralysis. The country is watching, the world is watching, and starting next week, there are real consequences of this. Why? Because the Senate is back from its uh, recess next week. So there will be real discussions in the, the upper chamber about funding uh, for Israel, funding for Ukraine, other matters. If the House still does not have itself in order, they will not be able to go forward. But say Jim Jordan does become speaker, then what? He has uh, been a central player in a shutdown uh, back in 2013. We Such remember that point. well, uh, covering the House. Uh, the uh, shutdown in 2018, 2019, for which he got nothing during the Trump administration. So I think when you step back, it is bigger than just the speaker's race here at this moment. It is that one of our political parties is just in gridlock, unable to work. And Donald Trump has been at the center of all of this. He supported Jim Jordan and people clearly are defying him. That may be one of the biggest takeaways 10 days after McCarthy was ousted. So many House Republicans are not following his lead. You bring up such a good point when you talk about the world watching here, because you hear Scott saying, we look like, makes us look like a bunch of idiots. Ron DeSantis is saying this looks like a clown show. I mean, what does this do on a, on a, in a broader scale of how it makes America look? It makes it look like the government is not fully functioning. And it's something that we've, I guess, known for a while. We've seen it sort of uh, in chapter by chapter from the Tea Party through different stages. But look, I mean, this is a moment, an inflection point, where perhaps, uh, you know, there will be, uh, 
an impetus to come together, but that has not been the case so far. Steve Calise likely was that person if there was going to be a unifying figure. There was no appetite for that. So how bad would it have to get? Talking to a couple members this morning, they think it would have to go several more days for there to be a true unifying government, for Democrats to have to get involved and maybe some moderate Republican. But it's hard to even get your mind around how that could happen in today's Washington because that speaker would be thrown out immediately as well. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that Scalise would have been that consensus figure, but there was something somewhere between uh, a dozen to two dozen uh, Republicans that were hard nose on him. As we take a look at this poll, this is how Republican leaders in Congress are handling their jobs according to uh, different political persuasions. Fewer than 50% of Republicans approve of how their own party is handling the situation on Capitol Hill. Is there any doubt that this is going to have an impact in the next election? Surprising it's that high, actually, because Republicans are so <laughs> divided. Uh, look, of course it's going to have an impact in the next election, but uh, the point is Republicans are supposed to be uh, going after the incumbent administration. Those are the Democrats. Republicans are supposed to be now the party out of power, at least in terms of the, the majority, showing that they can govern. And that is what actually worries some Republicans in terms of trying to maintain their House majority. Very difficult when some of those swing members here are being sort of, you know, uh, dragged through all of this. Yeah, they're certainly worried. Jeff, thank you so much. Our thanks to Manu Raju as well.